Hello, my name is Margaret and welcome to my Arts Corner of the Internet. Today we're going to take a journey back into the, the olden days of BTS because, you know, I've really, I haven't reacted to everything that they've done because they've, they've done a lot and so we're going to go back and watch one of their older pieces, that pieces, songs. You don't really call these pieces, I don't think. That's a very contemporary dance thing. Anyway, we're gonna go watch one of their old songs that I have not reacted to, and that is Dionysus, the god of wine from ancient Greece or Rome, I think it's Greece. Anyway, um, there's a lot of people on stage. How, when is this from? Three years ago. So I definitely have heard this song before. I think it was on my, like, I know you hate running on the treadmill, but you have to do it playlist for a while um haven't ran on a treadmill in a very long time so haven't heard this song in a very long time but i do remember listening to it Whoop. sorry <laughs> I feel like when you have a ton of people on stage, very simple things are just so captivating, which I love. And I also love the use of a prop. I am a prop girl. Give me the sets, give me the crazy costumes, give me a prop. So the fact that there is a table here is Oh. So you can definitely see the table wiggle a little bit. So I would assume that there are wheels on the bottom to make it more easy to glide in and out, or they possibly will move them later in the piece. So I guess the question is, if they move it later in the piece, they can't lock the wheels, um, or they can only lock the back two wheels. That's one of those things where sometimes it's like, you have this beautiful table in the back and people are like, oh, that was great. You know, you're dancing on it and then you pushed it around and like back behind the table, you're doing like armography and you're like using your toe to like unlock the table so you can move it. There's always things like that in dance where it's like, did you see that I helped with the quick change? And somebody's like, huh? And you're like, yeah, no, I was the one who like quickly grabbed it in the back and like shimmied off stage before you noticed that she she changed her shoes and you're like, what? There's always like little things like that, especially when you're working with props. But yeah, that looks slightly unstable. So I wonder if they are able to lock the wheels or if the other members are just like putting some weight on it. Ooh, that looks really fun. Oh, they do move it, okay. In comparison to the BTS things that I've seen more presently, uh, things, songs, they're called songs, Margaret, come on. I kind of like how like laid back and kind of chill this feels. It feels very groovy and informal in a sense. It feels like a party, a vibe, uh, where I feel like the stuff that I've seen from them now is so intense that the whole time you're like, and this one, it's still impressive. It's still great dancing, but it's a little bit more like, I feel like I can groove to it and enjoy what's happening more than like, you know, maybe not. That is a move that I've been seeing so much recently and I love it. You're telling me that they've been doing that for a while? Man. In this particular song, there's a very, very steady beat, which is why I probably used it to run on the treadmill because it's like very easy to run uh, with heavy beat songs because it keeps you like on tempo or like on pace. What I really find interesting is how much they are leaning into that steady rhythm. Um, they had a couple moments when they're like sipping where they were going with the lyrics, but 
a lot of the choreography I feel like has been highlighting and riding that like steady beat in the back um, instead of fluctuating with the vocal melodies, which I also think is interesting because I feel like much more now movements and dances are very, very coordinated with the words of the song. And I don't know if that's like a dance trend thing where like a lot of TikTok dances are very much in sync with the words, almost like pantomiming them. So I think that there might be something like that where it's kind of influencing modern day. I mean, this is only a couple years ago. I'm talking about it like it's like prehistoric, but I do think that it's interesting that besides a couple little moments, it's mostly riding on that backbeat. Two things. One, it definitely feels a lot more conversational and a lot more casual, which I'm really enjoying. But also I'm noticing, and this is like such a weird thing for me to notice, there's a lot of repetition in this piece, which I think is, I always say that things are interesting, but they are. I need to stop saying, which is interesting. Think of a different word, woman. A lot of choreography, you do like a, then we're gonna slide or something. And then you go like, pow, pow, pow. You do the step once and then move on where i feel like this one is like they're doing shoulder slide and then they're going back to the left and then they're going back so they're doing grooves but they're doing them in groups of like three or four it makes it feel less produced if you're going to a party with your friends you'll probably stick with like one groove for a while because you're you know i don't know what you're doing but you're probably going to stick with like one step and then maybe you'll pull in something else and do another step and then you pull in another step but then you're going to kind of go back to like a step touch for a little while where in choreography, which obviously this is choreography, but in choreography, you're constantly doing new and new things and different things and changing directions and lit and there's tons of variations and you're constantly changing things up because it's choreography, it's pre-planned, it's all the things. And so I think seeing the repetition is one of the things that's making it feel a little bit more casual. Also with like a lot of um, like personality interludes that have been in this so far where we're watching one or two people just like vibe on stage which is really fun to get to know the personalities of the dancers and to see what they do with that freedom Ooh. that's a lot of quad strength i think that that's such an interesting point because when they all kind of clump up i said interesting again didn't i when they all clump up, each one of them is doing it so personally to their own style, which is so much fun to see because it's so different. Again, adding to like that conversational bit. But then when they go down to this floor section, it's uh, much more uniform because it's more technical. And to see the specificity of what is happening and all the technical challenges that they're doing, you want it to be a little bit cleaner and uniform so that we can enjoy all of that. Whereas sometimes if everybody's doing their own style for the whole time, we can get overwhelmed as an audience and be like, I don't know what's happening, where do I watch? But when you have moments of personality and fun and party vibes, then when you go back into these more technical moments and everybody's synced back up, you're like, ooh, it's exciting. I love J-Hope. I really, I think that like their little here is their little here. This move is so good because it's such a like pump up song that I don't think you need anything super intricate to convey the power of the, is this the chorus? I'm gonna call it the chorus. You don't need a super crazy intricate technical step to convey the power of it. You just need something simple that can build up the energy. And I think even though it is a very simple move that literally anybody can do, the performance of it with the soundtrack makes it just feel like hype. <laughs> I feel like that whole section is just something that I would call like cinematic. It's very simple. Everybody could probably pick that up after one time watching it, but the musicality, but then also just like the structure of the 
picture that we're looking at. You could see that kind of picture of there's the table, one person in the middle spotlighted, and then everybody else around kind of being like this border. That is something that you could see in like a painting, right? It's composed beautifully to the eye and it looks picturesque. And so that's like a moment that feels very cinematic and that you'll remember later, even though the dancing wasn't necessarily like amazing, it's the image in the picture that will stick with you. We at steps now. Um, I was gonna say, I really like the little filigree. That's not the right word, but like the little designs on all the set pieces, because I think even though they're in a big white soundstage, which also looks so magical to dance in, I wanna dance in a giant space like that. I would just like run across it like, ah. that's a new dream of mine, bucket list. I like the fact that like the tables and the steps have character to the point where I'm like, yes, they are definitely in a Gothic cathedral right now. Well, I guess they could also be in ancient Greece. Cause you know, that's Dionysus, that's all in the game. But like you can like imagine them in that location because the props have some personality to it. Big table, got it. Ooh. I like that, <laughs> that was fun. Okay, first of all, it's my dream to choreograph like a tavern dance or like a bar dance where like there's like a bar tavern vibes but then somebody's doing like little table dance with the hands so this is making me very happy this is another thing that i would say is like very cinematic it's a striking image to see the long table and everybody peek up and hit those two accents i probably look crazy right there but it's very cinematic i don't know why that's the word i'm thinking of but they're like they are like picture moments what is it kodak moments it's like a kodak moment that you'll remember and those are just as important as the crazy technique or the super hard choreo or the super fast thing or whatever yeah. oh this is so i love this it's almost like a magic act or like CGI camera movie magic, but it's in real life. I mean, I'm still watching this on a computer, but I feel like when you see those in live settings, and it's so simple because it's just, everybody needs to squat down at the same time this person goes up, but when the timing is perfect, you're like, ah, ah. it's amazing. <laughs> but also sometimes, and I will be honest, sometimes they don't work in person. With a camera, you can pick exactly what angle you're seeing it from, and you know you can kind of make sure that it like looks good enough to have that same effect. Sometimes it doesn't work in person, but that's why when in person it does work, you're like, ah. Probably also, not gonna lie, very stressful for all the backup dancers and BTS to try to do that because everybody has to be on the same timing and if somebody's off, it's gonna be very obvious. So probably a little bit stressful. I do also have to say that I love when groups take their songs and then when they're performing them at like music shows or whatever they add in like these stories and interludes and new opening numbers they're always so good i'm also like a sucker for like narrative or story so anything that kind of adds like a little flair of that where i can like come up with a story in my head i'm all down for oh That's so cool. Again, kind of adding like special effects to a live performance, having those two different levels gives you like a whole new plane to work on as a choreographer and all of these different um, orientations that you can have your dancers to each other. So having them be right on top of each other gives so many new po possibilities that you didn't have when everything was just flat. And it's such a simple thing to just like, you know, have a little platform on the stage. Oh, that was great. Trust falls like that are, are very fun. I think the other thing that's really cool about this whole section is that there's nothing that's necessarily super technically difficult. Um, the difficult part is that you have however many people there 
it's a lot all working together to make these uh, shapes and ripples and that's the part that's really hard probably harder than teaching a room full of dancers a really hard combination but the end result is so beautiful i love it okay Okay, that came out of nowhere. I'm, I'm already pretty hyped, but like, yeah. I'm pausing the hype train. Uh, I was saying earlier, like, this is such a good move because it's pretty simple. And they were kind of doing it at like a four out of 10, right? Like energy level for the first half of this. And then through that little interlude. Now we're coming back with like this big crescendo coda before the end of the piece. And it almost looks like a completely different step because now instead of going here, they're going and now they're doing it at like a, a nine out of 10, a 10 out of 10 energy wise. And that's also super interesting. And that's also like a way that you can take one step and use it in like 100%. If you're looking at it from 0% to 100% energy wise, like you have a hundred different ways that you can do one step, 0%, 10%, 50%, 100%. So at the beginning they were doing it more at like a 40 and now they're doing it like at a hundred. They look so good doing that part. Okay, well, I had a wonderful time watching that. That was, that, that's up there. I really enjoyed that, especially that last huge dance break with everybody dancing and the tables, and then they do another little table dance. Love it. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I don't know what I usually say here, but I'll see you soon. Bye.